The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and tell, make sure you go to our own page and check out our more videos. Thank you. So we are going to pray tonight. And we are praying that God will stretch off his hands for you and for me. Let us go to the valley of dry bones. So I'll be talking about the valley of dry bones. From Ezekiel 37. We read from verse 1 to 6. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 6. The hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. And he led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry na o ma me fa so chini shiai na she na e do so para wo obon hwa no eni na she e ho akokwa se he asked me son of man can these bones live i said sovereign lord you alone know na obisa me se oni baba enu mpe be nyankwa na na me se ewurade nyankopon wo na wonim then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, can't you hear me say, she, she, no pay you who am Now, can't you hear one say, who no pay am who akokwa, muntie euradi. This is what the sovereign Lord says to those, to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I'll attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I'll put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Na me de intini beso so mumu, na me de nam egu muso, na me de redie akata moho, na me de ahume ashe mumu, na mo nyam kwa, na mo hune se mene eurade. Today I pray that you will know that he is the Lord. That our great God is not dead. He is still alive. And he is the Lord. The creator and the owner of all things. This vision. Ezekiel's third in the book. It's one of the most famous passages. Of the book of Ezekiel. It stands on its own powerful statements of God's power to recreate the community of Israel. The contents is significant. Sinful, wretched Israel, like bones in a valley. The primary meaning of this whole revelation or vision is that uh, the exiles were, 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 were despair. I mean, they were giving up. They, they didn't see any hope of any deliverance coming from anywhere. Now, they didn't 
see any deliverer or any deliverance coming from the north south east and west their relief was not anticipated at all no hope of deliverance it was in this in the midst of this exile's hopelessness that God showed him this vision. Dry bones in a valley. Dry bones in a valley. Dry bones in a valley. See, Isaiah has seen this nation, Israel, covered with wounds and sores. Isaiah one from verse one. Isaiah one verse one. Read verse one to three, and I'll jump to verse but they have rebelled against me. A king can't fee, or defy Zah Homano, a tear, a decay, a kind fee in you more, a decano. You can start from verse two. I started from verse two. A kind would defy Zah Homano, a tear decay, if in you more, a tossum, you know. So verse two, verse three, and then I'll go to verse six. Say, O Suru Muntie, oh, as I say, Yaso, na a rade a cassa, my yenny, ma, ama, when yenny, na. Mama won so na won die wa bo me soko. The ox knows its master. The donkey its own its owner's manager. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. In kwe nim niwura na efunumu en nim niwura e didi daka na Israel de onim me man. From verse 6. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness. Only wounds and wells and open sores, not cleanse or bandage or soothe with olive oil. So this is how the prophet Isaiah have seen Israel. Full of wounds and open sores. Not cleanse or bandage. It is not soothed with olive oil. It looks to me that disease seems to have galloped to death. Death to decomposition and bones disintegration. Now these disjointed bleach bones spells out the despair. Hopelessness. Hopelessness. To this mountain of bones, then Ezekiel was asked to prophesy into them. Now, <laughs> I like Ezekiel. I like the way he responded to God. When, when God says, Son of man, can these bones live? So no He said, I'm sure he was saying that you know that I'm a son of man. <laughs> That's why he said, You alone know. As you know that I'm a son of man. That's for son of man. <laughs> We don't see dry bones coming back to life. But you see, God was inviting him to trust the Almighty. And to act like a child of God. The God whom Abraham believed. 
This evening, I want to invite you to trust in the Almighty God. And to begin to act upon the word of God in faith. Many times in our day-to-day -day life, it is devoid of faith. But today I want you to act like a child of God. Romans 4, 17. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and, and calls into being Things that were not. Said your watcher, say, may the woman ya a man move for be bri a ja, Unyan Copoa, or Jenu dia, Unyani a woofo, na of friend no ma, Emma Eno, said no ma, a woho, na unim. The God in whom Abraham believed, Unyamia, Abraham Jenu di. Now who is he? Or no, why? The God who gives life the dead onyamia omania ewuo enyankwa and cause into being things that are not as though they were na noma enyu ho no ofre no se de ewo ho in the midst of darkness he calls out light esumu no onyame to me fre hain he is not seeing light anywhere out of darkness he calls things that are not as though they were oh. as in saying let there be light as though light was hiding somewhere and then the light will come forth. Now, if you're a child of God, begin to behave like God. Cause things that are not as though they were. That was what he was inviting Ezekiel to do. To act as a child of God. The question, can these bones live? Anticipates the exile's own self perception, total hopelessness. How do I know this? Ezekiel 37, verse 11. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. And now, what can I say? Oni Papa, a numpei ye Israel fi enu ni na she. What can say? Ye numpei mu akokwa na ye nida swa ayira kaya mkuwa kuwa kuwa kuwa. They say. Our bones are dried up. And our hope is gone. We are cut off. So the revelation of the dry bones was representing this Israelites in Israel. The dry bones is revealing what they have been saying. Ezekiel's response, I said, was so smart. I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Now this leaves the outcome to the sovereignty of God. The supreme being. To God's supreme power and authority. Now it is a fact that as children of men or sons of men, there are certain things that so far as we are concerned, it is impossible. But always remember that God is sovereign. We have a very big God. There is no limitation to what he can do. He's got the whole world in his hands. The whole world is in his hands. He sends some people to the grave. And at the same time, he brings some out of it. He is a great God, we say. So 
sovereign Lord. You alone know. You are the supreme power. The supreme authority. In our things. Ezekiel was confronted with death. Could he bring life? He was confronted with a curse. Had he a cure? See, as a man. He must tremble at the sight of the bones. But pivoted in Ezekiel's faith. Are the destinies of thousands, if not millions of people. In the, tribe, in the valley. So let's move on. Then he said to me. Now pay attention to this big word. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear. <laughs> but what does that mean? <laughs> dry bones. I've seen dry bones with years before. Say dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign law says to these bones. Now listen, this is what the sovereign law says to these bones. I not Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Will make breath enter you and you will come to life i will attack tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin i the sovereign law will put breath in you and you will come to life then you will know that I am the Lord. Now listen. All that Ezekiel is supposed to do is to prophesy. Otherwise, the one who is going to cause the dry bones to come to life is the sovereign law. The word breath here is the same that is translated as the spirit in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1. The spirit. Now let's go to Ezekiel 37 verse 1. The hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out by the spirit. Now look at the capital S. Of the Lord. He brought me out by the spirit of the Lord. So if you like, he brought me out by the breath of the Lord. He made man out of dust and he breathed into man. And man came to life by the breath of the Lord. I will make breath enter you. If you like, I will make my spirit fill these dry bones. And the Bible says, So I, Ezekiel, son of man, prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, <laughs> Something started happening. Uh, listen, up to this verse 7, there was no part that was going to play. They're coming together of the dry bones. They're coming to life. The Bible says that I, the sovereign Lord, me, prophesy to them and say to them, I me will. So Ezekiel was not going to do anything about the dry bones. All he was going to do was to prophesy as commanded. See, to prophesy is to repeat what God has said. 
the Onyamia can pep 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 pep. Prophesy is to repeat what God spoke to him. And he said, Ocean come no, and he said, Oh, can you yammy? I can't So Ezekiel's job was to repeat the word of God as he heard him speak. Ezekiel, the human is saying, You yammy, I can't tell you no, what you know, obesity subiu. That is why verse 7 says this. So I prophesy, and I'm ashamed, come, I was commanded, said you were shaming. And as I was prophesying, <laughs> let's go to verse 8. Mm. Now, but let's go. Let me let me take you back to chapter 1. Same Ezekiel chapter 1, not 37. Chapter 1. Then the last verse. Verse. Last verse. Verse 8. Verse 8. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a raining day, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell face down, and I heard a voice of one speaking. Said the Yankonton, a woman who moved, or suto da etieno, Sarah, and an Israel, a chan of Michiano tear, and no, ni a radi and numonyam and sassuano tibia. This was the Namu, no, 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 Meshi, I say, the menim butu fem, Namiti, and Nibia ekas. This was the first revelation. We need a dear, when he heard the voice, but tea and neno. When he saw the glory, uh -huh. and you know, he fell face down. But in the name two form. Then chapter two, verse one. Now Oba Etimienu in Yumu de Kainoa. He said to me, Now catch him, son of man, when you papa stand up on your feet. So original nine so now speak to you. Na in one casa. Verse two. Oba in Yumu Yunua. As he spoke, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. Now, all Casa Chemino, whom be Pamiso, na a mammy so genai, menine so, as it ye, dear, or name a as he spoke. Or Casano. Now, some persons say that once he saw the glory and then he heard the sound, he fell now as though dead. He was weak. Who can kind of only be a chess, eh, bra, when you yam not say, and you know, or Tishi, to say, dear, why then a hand tapped me and say, he said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. Very weak. But as he, sp he spoke, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. As he spoke, the spirit came into me. Now, if you like, as he spoke, the breath came into me. And I and raised me on my feet. So what you raised him on his feet was the spirit from the voice of the Almighty, from the breath of the Almighty. Now, so hold that. So, we move so this is not the first time that Ezekiel is going to see breath giving life because he himself he has experienced it. And to when you need bread, can you Ezekiel? Oba be who say a home a man kwa is an so no emu we who no be that the spirit gives life. Who who no man kwa it quickens. Okay, it to me the Kenya ba. So now, TFA he is spoken. Akasa, let's see what happened. Omi and Shadi see. We are in verse 8 now. He said, You have caught in your moon and watching. There was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath, breath in them. Na me she na she entini ba so na enam ba ho na we dia be kata so nanso na ho mi biara enim 
So he gets cops out of the bones now. And he say we to me anya but of what use are cops and so if you there and fast obey and a wasso but at least there is some hope ah are you fun on a few number of verse 9 and it has walk a crab and you move and crono then he said to me or catch them he said professor to the breath professor to the breath prophesy to professor son of man and say to it this is what the sovereign lord says come breath from the four winds and breathe into this slain that they may live and now catch them say shen kwam chen framano shen kwam oni paba na catch them framano say say uradi nyan kupon siye niye ahumye frim frama and nano so bra na pe humi gu ni pa kwa kum kum woye so na wunyan kwa so I prophesied. I repeated what God has said. As he has commanded. And breath. The spirit of God entered them. They came to life. And stood on their feet. A vast army. My brothers and sisters. I don't know. We serve an omnipotent God. Leonard Ravenhill has said, when we connect our impotence to his omnipotence, impossibility is dissolved. Leonard Ravenhill said, now, okay, or say, say, the young one to be a cotua on Yankupon to me, to me, the young and I know, near end to me, you know, a rat. When we connect our impotence to his omnipotence, impossibility is dissolved. And so the power to cause is not from any man. All that God expects us to do is to have the faith to repeat what he has said. Look at your wayward child. And repeat just what God has said. Because it is in the will of God that you, that, that child will come back home. It is in the will of God that your husband will not die unbeliever. So speak the word of God to him. Speak. One day Mary said, How can this be? Since I do not have a husband. Because on this part of the world, you cannot get pregnant without a husband. And the answer was simple. Just like in Ezekiel 37. Gabriel said the breath of God will come upon you. The spirit of God will come upon you. And Mary answered. May your word to me. Some are be fulfilled. Let the prophecy be repeated in my life. Let your prophecy be. come to pass in my life. Let us look into the scripture. Let us speak the word of God. Into hopeless situations. Dry bones will live again. Because this is not by might. It is not by power. It is still by the Spirit of God. So you don't be afraid. It is not your power that is going to bring the bones together. It is the Word of God. And your faith in the Word that will do it. Tonight, when we stand praying, I want you to believe God for the impossibility. Let your impotence connect with the omnipotence of God. And impossibilities will give way. And 
God is waiting for someone who will trust him as the sovereign Lord. The supreme power and authority. God is waiting for someone who will trust his living word and apply it as he hears it. And say to situations so that situations will give way. Situations will change. Be careful what you are labeling impossible. It is not you, but it is the Lord. Many times where we get stuck is when we come to the how. Forget about that. Yes. Yes. It's to repeat the word. Just as he has commanded you. And do it today. Do it tonight. Do it this evening. Do it this morning. Wherever you are, do it. I want to encourage you. You are seeing dry bones. It is a sovereign law. Who will fix the problem? Your husband is a drunkard. It is a sovereign law. Who will fix the problem? Yours is to repeat the word of God. Prophesy unto him. Some people have been asking. How can we possibly possess nations? This is not my case. It is the sovereign Lord who will do it. It is the sovereign Lord who will do it. Ours is to be determined. To prophesy unto the nations. To prophesy unto the nations. That nations hear the word of God. Hear the word of God. Be aligned with the things of God. And the sovereign Lord will do it. Wherever you are, I want you to stand up by faith and rise as a child of God. And begin to behave as a child of God. Speak. Call things that are not as though they were. Things that are not as though they were. Now listen to me and look at me. You always cause the things that are not as though they were. So when your husband is a drunkard, you don't always say you drunkard. You're only calling the thing that is. But we call the things that are not. So what you want the husband to receive is what you call. In the will of God. Don't repeat that you are a bad boy. Men can say money no say oh, boy. He's a bad boy. Uh -huh. So repeating yeah, yeah, yeah. that you are a bad boy is not know. an act of faith. And you, did, yeah. you need to call the things that are not. Friend, no ma any one. As though they were. So prophesy unto your child. Prophesy unto your situation. Prophesy unto your joblessness. Shall we rise in prayer? And open your mouth. Behave as a child of God.